Hey everybody, it's Shadowstar here, and I am going to be ranking every episode in Series 1 of Doctor Who, the modern series. Because I decided, you know what, why not? There's 10 stories in the first season, if we count two parters as one, so why not just go over each of them and decide which one goes where? Because I realised some of my rankings might be quite different than a lot of people's rankings. Some people will praise certain episodes, some people won't, so let's see what I have to say. But in 10th position, at the lowest bar, we have The Long Game, where this is easily the weakest and my least favourite of Series 1. It's not awful, no episode in Series 1 is awful, but I feel like there's just way too much time spent on Adam, and I know some people might think, oh, it's an interesting change of pace to have Adam as a companion, but, like, I didn't care for Adam. I didn't care for a lot of the plot of this episode, or the side characters introduced in this episode, only the, the only highlight scene in this episode is the Doctor confronting the director or whatever his name was. That was about the only other scene, but otherwise I felt like we were just jumping around with these side characters a bit too much for my liking. I get what they were going for with the whole fake news thing, and it kind of works, but at the same time, compared to the rest of the season, it just doesn't pull me in. But it was an alright episode. But this next one is going to be controversial. In ninth position, I'm putting Father's Day. I don't get what's so special about it. You'll soon realise with me that I'm not sucked in by the big emotional episodes in Doctor Who. I'm just not. When I watch Doctor Who, I never get emotional. I never care about the emotional episodes. There are other shows when I care about emotional episodes, but I've never been one for the emotional episodes in Doctor Who. So, yeah, that doesn't leave much of it. It is an interesting episode, but I feel like we're sitting around, and half the episode is just Rose and Pete Tyler talking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and then the Doctor getting angry, and then the Doctor disappearing, and it's like, again, I get that we're going for it, but still, my one criticism, and this isn't a problem with the episode, is so many people misunderstand how the Reapers work. The Reapers were appeared not just because Rose touched the baby, but because time was already weakened because there was two of them in the same place, and then she broke time by changing time. People keep freaking out, it's like, oh, you touch yourself, why didn't the Reapers appear? It is a funny thing that we invented the Reapers and they've never come back. They're like the time wraiths, but they never come back. But anyway, getting back to this episode at hand, it's just like, it's a lot of sitting around, and I feel like not much is happening until it's like, oh, Pete Tyler figures out what we need to do, and it's like, all we're doing is really, there's no villain, it's just, let's have some emotions with Rose Tyler and her father. whoop de doo Now let's move on to eight, and I don't, hate this one by any means, but it does have some weaknesses. It's World War 3 and Aliens of London. I mean, there are definitely some good points. There's a lot of good Doctor moments in this, and Harriet Jones, and I feel like obviously this is the better... I feel like Mickey really steps up to the plate in this episode. Like, all in all, Mickey is always a great character in these episodes, so that's a great part. Obviously, a lot of people are going to criticise the Slothina's villains, because they're very... Very childish at times, but I feel like when they're in human form, particularly Margaret, that's the one you actually pay attention to, because you can actually have a confrontation between the Doctor and the Slovene. And it's the first time Units showed up in a modern series, so, you know, it was an alright episode, it just, I wish it wasn't as silly as it was. Next we have The Unquiet Dead, another pretty good one. Like I said, none of these episodes are particularly bad, but The Unquiet Dead was also a pretty good one. You know, Charles Dickens made for an interesting character. I feel like obviously he's the highlight of the episode. There was some interesting mystery with the Gwyneth character. I feel like all in all, this was a good story for Rose as well, because it's the first time Rose has to confront some more uncomfortable situations and the death that can happen, because even though it, there had been death in the previous two stories, this is the first one where she's really confronted with getting attached to a... It's the first time you have a, in the modern series, you have a one-off character you get attached to who then dies. That really hadn't happened just yet, because we were still focusing on Rose. So it's the first time we get to go to the past, we get to focus on a one-off character. All good points, honestly. So yeah, it's not much I can really say bad about it. It's just all these later episodes are going to stand out more. 
Next, a lot of people will be shocked this isn't a little bit higher, but I'm going to give the sixth slot to The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. It's a pretty good episode. I just feel like the irony is this is one of the rare times where, I'm not saying they should have made this a single episode, because that would have been ridiculous, but I feel like as a two-parter, there are scenes that drag on and get a little bit slow. Obviously, the highlight is having Jack around, and he's a great character, and obviously all that stuff. It's great to finally have... You know, they cram a lot into series one, so you've got to give credit to throw in all these characters. And because Jack spends a lot of time with Rose, it also means the Doctor gets to go off and figure out the plot on his own for quite a while, which is great. I do... I, I feel like people over-credit the Everybody Lives scene, since it's something that Moffat seems to do a lot more of, but I'll give him a break since this is the first time he did it. But still... But yeah, anyway, that episode, that story was still pretty good. There are a lot of good scenes, but because it's a two-parter, I feel like they hadn't quite figured out how to make two-parters not too slow, since, you know, a two-parter is the standard length of a classic series episode, and there are quite a few slow scenes when we're dragging on with the kid and, um, and, um, what's her name and, you know, all that stuff, so... I don't know. It could have they could have just filled it with something a little bit more. I feel like they dragged on and I know it's got a creepy villain, but I didn't find it creepy. I know other people go, oh it's a creepy. Nah, it's not that creepy. What are you talking about? Whatever. Moving on to an episode I really enjoy, but others don't as much. It's Boomtown. Okay, the downside is I don't care for the Rose and Mickey stuff at all. But Jack's in this episode, and it's great to see the dynamic that Jack, Rose, and the Doctor have, and even Mickey joining in with this episode when before we get to Margaret, that's great. And then you get all the confrontation between the Doctor and Margaret, which is great, and then the ending is great, so, you know, I like that it's not a crazy action episode, it's, it starts off with a light-hearted episode, and then you get into a lot of a sit-down-and-talk episode, which... You'd think a sit-down-and-talk episode would be bad, but I think it really worked well, because they took one of the best actresses from the Slothene episode, and they managed to make the Slothene much more serious in this episode than they did in the original two-parter, which, thank goodness, they did, by having just one Slothene and making it a lot more personal. You know, it's, it's fun to imagine what Margaret has been up to for these past six months, living in disguise. Yo, know, and then like I said, getting to see Rose and the Doctor and Jack and Mickey all hanging out, that was a great fun. It's just a nice, light-hearted episode, which is perfect. I feel like it's a perfectly placed between the big two-parter of The Empty Child and the two-part finale. I really like Boomtown, and I think people don't give it enough credit. Now, moving on to the fourth position, it's Rose, the very first episode in a modern series, and that's why it gets a lot of credit. It's just, in this one episode, you really get sold on the Doctor. There is a few scenes which I think that the Doctor doesn't quite get it, because the ending can feel a little rushed with the whole anti-plastic thing, but I feel like the villains aren't the highlight of this episode. The Doctor is, and managing to bring back the show in both a modern way, but still feel like the classic, and try to have a mix of it, is very interesting, especially since the Ninth Doctor is... Quite different when compared to pretty much every classic Doctor had that had come before him. It's a very tricky path they had to lay, and they did a very good job of it. I mean, like I said, this ep the highlight of this episode is let's sell you on, let's sell you on the new Doctor, and then I'd say the next episode is sell you on Rose. Speaking of which, in my third position, it's the end of the t uh, world. End of the world. This is the if the first episode is about selling you on the Doctor, this one's about selling you on Rose, and I think they do a really good job of it. They focus way more on Rose, but still manage to focus on the Doctor by giving us mystery and backstory that intrigues both new and old fans when you've got the ending with when he talks Rose, or when he's got some good scenes with, um, I forgot the tree girl's name, but either way, those are some good scenes when we get to see some of the depth in the Doctor, the new depth in this Doctor, as that hadn't been there in a the classic series, so it's a very good episode that manages to, you know, it's campy in some ways, fun in other ways, but manages to have a lot of depth for both the Doctor and be a good first adventure for Rose. Alright, let's get on to the big stuff. In second position, it's Dalek. 
you want depth, well then go look at the scene where the Doctor confronts the Dalek and we get to hear a lot more backstory with the Time War. I mean, I know we'd heard about the Time War before, but this is the episode that really lays a lot of the cards on the table. It manages to bring the Daleks back and... It's the first episode, it's not to say the Daleks weren't big in classic series, because of course they were, but I feel like it's the first episode with that really says, okay, the Daleks are going to be a lot more larger than life in the modern series. I mean, like I said, the Daleks had always been there in classic series, but I feel like this is the episode that really showcased them as a larger than life figure by not just by both having this one Dalek be powerful, but also the music, the way the new Daleks look, and of course giving them the whole backstory with the Time War. This episode pretty much hypes up the Daleks and lays a groundwork for what you expect the Daleks to be throughout the modern series, especially through the four, first four seasons. Speaking of the Daleks, the top position is the finale, the two-parter. First off, you get to have some fun because it's a two-parter. We can take out because it's a two-parter. We get to have some fun and take some time with the game show stuff, which was all great. And you know, you get to have, be light-hearted and just you know, I love seeing the Doctor and the Big Brother set in a way he just doesn't give a crap and all that stuff. It's it's so fun. The way I like the juxtaposition of the fact that when the housemates are making a big deal about somebody leaving. And it's so perfect because, on one hand, they are acting like housemates really do on the show, except this time it's actually warranted because they know you die. Except in real Big Brother, housemates get all dramatic like that anyway. So I like the Doctor's reaction because it's like me. It's like, so what? He's just They're just outside. At least that's how it would be in a real show. So I like that reaction. And then, you know, once all the game show stuff is gone, then you get to move on to the more serious stuff, where you get a mystery, it's like, okay, what's going on, this place is evil, they're killing people, and the odd thing is, like, I know, we know, okay, the Daleks want to take these people, but I feel like they could have given a bit more depth into the fact of why are all these people who control the place okay with killing all the contestants, but then again, then, but once you get the Daleks, it's crazy, like, I have such nostalgia for the second half the second episode, because that was basically the first thing I ever saw. I thought, oh, I saw Doctor Who on TV one day. I'm like, I'm going to watch this. I'll see what it's like. And just by pure coincidence, it happened to be that one episode, that final episode. And it's a big episode with a lot of Daleks. What's not to love about it? It's a big episode with a lot of Daleks, and the Daleks kill basically everyone. Everyone dies. And that's what the Daleks are supposed to do. Every, obviously, as a Russell T. Davies finale, the whole bad wolf thing can feel a little bit like a Deus Ex Machina, but pfft, get used to it. Doctor Who finales, while they're always climactic and exciting, the actual solution can be a little uh, rushed or random or out of nowhere, but and I guess they tried to kind of set it up with, the, with Boomtown telling us how powerful the TARDIS is. So yeah, you just kind of have to think about how powerful the TARDIS is. But still, it's it's a Dalek episode with amazing music and one of the more understated regeneration stories since, you know, it wasn't a regeneration planned, it was a regeneration happening at the last minute behind the scenes. So you get to have a more understated regeneration, which I kind of like. It feels more like the classic series where regenerations were usually a lot more understated until the end. And you're like, oh, it's a regeneration story. And that's the way it is. So yeah, it was a pretty damn good finale. That, And this is the one thing I'll say about series one is series one is extremely well connected. Like almost every episode feels like it's connected to the other episodes and almost no episode feels skippable, which I really love. Series 1 is incredibly underrated, not just because it's the only one with the ninth Doctor, but because it's a very well-done, self-contained series with a lot in it. So yeah, my placements for these episodes may have been a bit odd, but like I said, pretty much no episode in Series 1 is a bad episode. Like, even the long game is still an okay episode to watch. All of the episodes are good episodes. All of them are pretty damn good. There's none of them where I sit there going, ugh, do I have to watch this one? And that's how you want a season to be. Anyway, uh, 
I will eventually be ranking all the episodes in Series 2 and all the other seasons as well. So, uh, see you next time, guys.